Howdy, welcome back. Uh, so last video, we put the whole tail cone together, got everything match drilled and ready to be taken apart for deburring and dimpling. Uh, so this video here, we're gonna jump right on into deburring. Probably won't get the whole thing on camera, probably just do a quick time lapse because it's not the most exciting thing to watch. Uh, but those of you who are also building or just for reference, uh, we're gonna be starting on uh, step four on page 10-15. Uh, so that's gonna involve deburring all of these uh, parts here. Uh, so like I said, we'll probably do a little time lapse here and uh, yeah, we'll get to it. Alrighty, real quick here, uh, I want to show you a little modification I had to make to this yoke uh, in order to dimple uh, this piece here. Uh, so this part number is F1012B, uh, and you'll notice looking down at uh, these flanges here are a little bit past 90. Probably kind of hard to tell on camera here. Yeah, so they're just past 90, um, but it's enough that it actually interferes with the, uh, the front of the yoke here. Um, so originally this yoke went straight up on the nose there. Um, so you'll see I went ahead on the uh, on my grinding wheel, not on the Scotch Bright pad, but the wheel that I left just for when I do any work with steel. Um, anyways, went on that and uh, just removed just a little bit of material. Uh, not too much. I didn't go past or I didn't go in from where this die rests, so it still has full support there. Um, I just went ever so slightly in, so you'll notice that now. Let's see if I can get this in frame. Um, looking down the flange here. So anyways, as you can probably see here, uh, before I did that, let me see if I can move this a little bit. Uh, before I did that, it was interfering with this metal here and it was pushing it and widening this here. It was causing a little bit of uh, deformation of the material. I was able to move it back, uh, but I just don't wanna have to do it for every single dimple going forward. Uh, so anyways, made that modification there. So ever since then, you'll notice that it goes together, uh, goes through there real smoothly and it's not getting any deformation. It's hard to get on camera here. Anyway, it's not getting any deformation of the material there, uh, which is super nice. Alrighty, real quick here, wanted to go over something that you'll see for sure in this video and possibly going forward in future videos um, in regards to nut plates. Uh, so this step in the process that I'm at involves dimpling, uh, dimpling the skin uh, for these dimpled nut plates, which hold a number six screw, which holds on cover plates. Um, anyways, when it comes to these, you normally have to dimple the skin for that screw itself, but then you also have to dimple it for the rivets that hold down the nut plate. And then you also have to dimple the little side holes here on the nut plate for those dimpled holes in the skin. So it's a whole lot of dimpling, um, but there's an issue that usually comes up when it comes to dimpling, uh, which is dimpling the, the nut plate itself here. And you'll notice why, uh, you'll see here, with that nut plate, as the dimple die comes down, it interferes with that, uh, that raised portion there for the dimple. And what that causes, is it causes the whole thing to kind of get mangled, pushed to the side, uh, which then you in turn either have to live with it crooked or the proper way would probably be to flatten it out, straighten things out after the fact. The dimple ends up not looking super pretty because it's going into the steel piece here. Um, makes a, it, anyways, not the prettiest thing in the world, um, but there's a large group of people that I see online uh, who don't actually dimple for their nut plates. They actually get away with using oops rivets. So these 1097, uh, rivets here, oops rivets from, I think I got these on uh, aircraft spruce, probably like 25 bucks or so. Uh, anyways, these rivets here, and they use these in combination with a regular deburring tool and actually ca slightly countersink the skin uh, for these smaller head oops rivets. So I'll show you real quick here on camera. Um, but going forward, like I said, I'm gonna try doing this because uh, it's gonna save probably a lot of time and it, I, in my opinion, this could end up looking uh, looking better versus having a, a mangled rivet that may not have a proper dimple in it. Um, so anyways, I'm gonna give this a shot on this video here. These videos, like I said previously, are not how-to guides. It's more of just voicing the crazy thoughts that go on inside my head and going over our build process here. Uh, but I'm gonna give it a shot. So real quickly here, I'll show you with the camera um, what this exactly means as far as countersinking it goes. Um, so I mentioned, let me see if I can get my screen to light up here. Anyways, I mentioned that uh, that uses the regular deburring tool and countersink. 
And that's really all that happened here. So it's probably really hard to see on camera, but I, I countersunk it ever so slightly with that deburring tool. And you'll see there with that oops rivet head, it sits perfectly flat. So anyways, you'll see this probably a lot more going forward or hopefully a lot more going forward. I'm using this method here of these oops rivets countersunk with the deburring tool. Um, Cause this, in my opinion, is, is far easier, um, less of a headache than having to dimple the skin and then dimple those those really just hefty steel nut plates there. Uh, so anyways, we're gonna get back to it probably in time-lapse form, uh, but next step is dimpling these skins here and uh, moving forward, then we'll get ready to uh, throw some rivets in. I mean, she, uh, the twin here. Um, anyway, she is going to be cutting this piece apart here. This is gonna be for the battery channels. Um, so we'll get her on the bandsaw over there. We'll have her knock these out and get them deburred. And then we'll also have her do the belt crank. Um, so that's also ready to go. Um, so she's gonna be cutting these apart and deburring and I'm gonna be recording and it's gonna be awesome. What am I doing? Oh boy. So we are officially up to the point of riveting. Um, so off camera, went ahead and knocked this one out. Actually, me and my, my grandfather and I uh, knocked it out, which was really cool. So my mom's dad, uh, he's a, uh, was a lineman, steel fabricator, um, all things metal, steel side and welding. Uh, but this is his first time doing anything uh, more intricate, aluminum, solid rivets and whatnot. So it was neat to be able to show him. Uh, so he was actually able to, uh, uh, to squeeze these top rivets here and I went ahead and squeezed the rest. Um, but anyways, ready to move forward. It was pretty neat to have him in town here. Uh, but going forward, it'll just be me for the time being. Um, so we're gonna jump into the F1011 uh, bulkhead and uh, we'll get to riveting. Not sure if I'm gonna do intricate shots or time-lapse, uh, but we're gonna jump on anything things here and uh, get to riveting. Alrighty, real quick here, because uh, I'm sure someone will wonder, um, but this part here you'll see is not primed on one side, but it is primed on the other. The reason why I did this um, on this part here is I actually did end up scratching the surface here. Not sure if it was while I was using um, my air die grinder with a scotch Sprite wheel if it slipped out and scuffed it, or if it was with my deburring tool. Either way, I remember I did scratch it, uh, so I buffed out the scratch, threw a coat of primer on it, uh, but that's why one side has it and the other doesn't. Uh, but going forward, I'm not priming anything that uh, that already has that protective coating on it from bands that hasn't been scratched. So if it's been scratched, I'm priming it. Um, if not, I'm leaving it as is. And then these parts here, the reason why these are primed is I was nailing these things with a hammer. Um, it got a little bit scuffed up while I was uh, beating it with a hammer during the initial process where we made these straight. 
Um, and then this piece here, the reason why this one is primed uh, is because this angle aluminum that comes from Vance, uh, it's just standard aluminum. It hasn't been treated, or at least to my knowledge, hasn't been treated with the same protective coating that any of the, uh, the stamped uh, sheet material has uh, been coated with. Um, so anyways, that's what I've primed and not primed. You'll see a mismatch going forward here, uh, but that's why. video quality here filming on my iPhone. Uh, actually, I just walked out from editing that last portion that you last saw in this here video uh, and realized that this video is going to get way too long if I continue all the way through the end because uh, I can continue all the way through, through the end. I have all the footage ready. Um, the tail coat is done behind, uh, behind my phone there, hanging up all pretty looking. Uh, so I'll give you a quick little teaser of what it looked like when it was finished somewhere here, a little spinny doodad picture. Um, yeah, it's a really, really fun process. I don't want to water down the, and just skim over a lot of the video from uh, what I'll include in the next video. Anyways, I know this video here had a lot of those uh, overall wide angle shot time lapse with songs in the background, uh, which I know a lot of people will appreciate the more in depth, info packed, um, good tricks and tips kind of video. So, next video will involve quite a bit of that, especially on the tail cone. Um, there were definitely some pain points along the way. Uh, with myself inside of it, Amanda inside of it. Uh, anyways, a really, really fun process. Um, you'll also see I had uh, Brandon out here. He's Brandon's a local guy who's gonna be building an RV pretty shortly here. Uh, so he came out and helped Buck. Um, anyways, a lot of really good video that I wanna, wanna make sure to highlight in the next video here. Um, so, if you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. Uh, next video, like I said, we'll be finishing up the tail cone. Uh, no more tail cone videos after that. After that though, uh, we're gonna be unboxing or inventorying wings. I have wings sitting down here to my left. Uh, so we have a lot of stuff to crank out here, hence the uh, sense of urgency with getting these, these videos out. Anyways, if you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video, go ahead and give it a like. Uh, next video, hopefully I'll have released in this next week. Make sure that you're subscribed with notifications on that way you're notified. Um, yeah, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Adios.